Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Sunday School Review. We're going to jump into the Word of God and see how uh, we can use the Word of God and apply it to our lives, our everyday lives, and make our life a whole lot better than what it is now. And then those that are around us make their lives a whole lot better than it is right now. Has anybody ever made you a promise that they didn't keep? Have you ever made a promise uh, that you didn't keep? And how did it feel when someone told you they were going to do something and what they told you they were going to do, you knew it was going to make a big difference in your life, it was going to help you make things a whole lot uh, manageable, easier to do, because it was going to be a helper for you. It was going to be an enlightener. It was going to give you uh, direction, instruction, uh, aid. And all of a sudden, they didn't keep it. Well, today we got an outstanding subject because we have someone that definitely keeps his word. Jesus makes a promise. Coming from Acts chapter 1 and uh, verses 1 through 11, it's a very, very powerful verse. And I want you all to, to, to stay with us on this whole period of time. And we're going to look at, kind of do a little commentary uh, on the, uh, a little context on our, our, our lesson first, then get into the verse by verse um, commentary and then bring it on to a close on the end. But the context is we, we may find it pretty surprising that Luke, Dr. Luke, the physician, and also a Gentile, wrote more of the New Testament, more than anybody else. This includes uh, Paul. Luke wrote uh, 37,932 words in Greek across 2,158 verses. You read about this in your context. Now you compare this to Paul, who is also a very powerful man of God in the word of God. Paul wrote 32,404 words that uh, across 2,033 verses, he wrote 13 epistles. Now at that time, uh, when they wrote the, wrote the word of God out, it was generally put on strolls, and the maximum practical length of a stroll was about 10 yards. So Luke's gospel and the book of Acts have about two of them, about two of those, those strolls worth uh, of all that, which was a lot of material. So they, since it was so much, they had to be divided up. Luke did not put all this in one chapter. So Luke did a... Um, a thoughtful, a very thorough division of the two books. Uh, and in one account, it, 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 we see his account of Jesus. And also we see his account of the church. Now the bridge between these two is the ascension when Jesus went up, found in Luke chapter 2, verses 50 through 53, and repeated again in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And when one does a careful study of these two books, it shows that Luke, the doctor, the physician, maintained a very high standard, which is a word we don't hear a whole lot now in churches, you know, standard of accuracy. And that leads us to our lesson for the day. And I'm going I'm to pull it up so everybody can, can see it here. And I'm going to we'll read all 11 verses. The formal treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. 
When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken those things or these things which while they beheld, he was taken up. Let me read that again. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, while also which, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye glazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So we're going we're gonna to kind of bring it down now and do a little commentary. This, this lesson, uh, I want you to see the word, the word just kind of spread it all over the place. I mean, you see Rome and Italy and Macedonia, Achaia and Corinth, Athens, Crete, Asia, uh, Ephesus, Galatia, Antioch, uh, and just Cyprus, on and on again, Judah, Jerusalem. The word of God spread in a, at a very, very rapid pace because there were men of God that were preaching the word of God with a certain kind of urgency that we just don't uh, we just don't see it that way today. And so, when we look at verse number one, the Gospel of Luke, you see the for, the formal treaties. And let's kind of break down the formal treaties, and the formal treaties and the Book of Acts are addressed to one Theophilus. And some students believe that uh, he may have been Luke's financial backer. You know, the, the, the bank rolled those strolls. They were not very, they were not cheap. And in Luke, in Luke chapter one, verse three, this same guy is referred to as most excellent. So, so Theophilus, uh, which is a language generally, you know, used this, this, this term most excellent is a, is a term generally used for high governmental officials. So when they said um, most excellent Theophilus, it, it, it tells us maybe this guy was someone that had a lot of prestige and power uh, during that time. And as you may already recall that Paul also addressed the governors, you know, Felix and, and Festus in a very similar manner as Theophilus was addressed as most excellent. You read about that in Acts chapter 23 and 26, chapter 24 and 3, in chapter 26 and 25. Now the name Theophilus also means anyone who loves God. So then there are other Bible students that believe that the, the name refers to all who would and who does and who did sincerely seek the truth by reading what Dr. Luke, the physician, had to write about the truth. And of all, when he said of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, and it kind of summarizes the Luke, the, the content of the book of Luke. Then in verse two, we see until the day he was taken up. Then after he was taken up, you know, Jesus through the Holy Ghost had gave the, 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 the disciples something to do, gave them commandments to those, all those apostles that he had chosen. And so this verse then, verse two, kind of highlights uh, how the gospel of Luke ends and the progressive connection point where the book of Acts begins. And see, in verse three, he showed himself, Jesus, showed himself alive. This is after the crucifixion and his resurrection. He showed himself alive 
by 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 so many things that were so true, so true, they were infallible. You couldn't prove them wrong. They was they were evidence. People have saw him, talked to him, heard him when he rose from the dead. And then they had seen him not two or three days. The word said they saw him for 40 days. And he was speaking to them uh, about the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. So then this after resurrection, this, this post-resurrection, the, all these post-resurrection appearances to Jesus, uh, of Jesus to his apostles, and a lot of other folks, not just the apostles, but other people also were confirmed. And history is very clear, the record is very clear, that they, they did crucify him, he did die, they did bury him in a borrowed tomb. But he got up. He didn't stay there. Now, there are many others that when you, you go and try to look for them, and you may still find the bones, but they did not raise. They did not get up and walk around and talk and teach again. But Jesus, he got up. I want you to read Matthews chapter 28 and 17, Luke chapter 24 and 34, John chapter 20, verse 19 and 26, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 5 through 8. The 40 days that we see in this verse are in conjunction with the 50 days between the Passover um, uh, and Pentecost, the, the Passover, which is when Jesus was crucified in Matthew chapter 26 and 2, and the birth of the church that we call now the day of Pentecost in Acts, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. So when Jesus departed, when Jesus left the scene, it was, a, it was a week and a half of intense waiting. A week and a half of what's going to happen now. A week and a half of when this promise called the Holy Ghost was going to get him. But them guys had to follow direction and wait until that time came. And we see in verse 4 that uh, when they were assembled together, Jesus was also with them, assembled together. He, he gave them a command, not a suggestion, gave them a commandment. I want y'all to wait here in Jerusalem. Don't go nowhere else. Don't go back down to Galilee. I want y'all to wait here in Jerusalem. One of the problems that we see in the body of Christ, this is the true class, we have a hard time following Jesus' direction. I want you to wait on this. Wait on that. I want you to wait here in your city. Wait here before you make that major decision. Wait here until I give you word to go. No, I'm going. If I have to go by myself, I'm, no, no, I want you to wait here a little while longer. Then I give you word as to when you should go. See, when Jesus departed, the disciples could have left Jerusalem and went back home to Galilee. And I'm, we, let, let's go back, go back, go back down here to our hometown, and let's go fishing. They could have just went on back to Galilee, but God strategically chose Jerusalem. He always know where to put us. He, he chose Jerusalem to be the birthplace of his church. And this is all in the plan of God. Listen, class, God is never caught by surprise. God knows everything, he everywhere. Keep in mind now, he also knows all about our situation. It's our job to do what he asked us to do and to be kingdom citizens and do kingdom work. We see in, in verse four and five also that he told them, I want y'all to wait because that's it's a promise coming. It's already been made and it's, it's coming. The promise of the father and what he said, y'all done heard of me. He has told them, he says, look, now John baptized y'all with water. And that was a necessary part of the process. But if something's going to come after the baptism of the water, it's called the Holy Ghost. And, and that Holy Ghost, and, and listen at this, ain't going to be too many days from where, this time right now. The Holy Ghost is going to come. The, the same Holy Ghost that all of us that's born again and say we, we, that, that's free, a free gift to all of us. The Holy Ghost. You can't pay for it. You can't, you can't rent it. You can't lease it. It's a free gift. We have to accept it, however, because Jesus ain't going to force it on us. Boys, I want y'all to wait now. Down in Jerusalem, 
until that Holy Ghost that I'm going to say is going to come. And boy, when it get him, it's going to make all the difference in the world. The Greek word, the Greek word translated baptized means completely immersed. Okay. Up under the water. So when the Holy Ghost came, it was going to be like an emerging that involves the body, soul, spirit, and mind. It was, it was, see, which is why it's kind of hard to see how folks say, I got the Holy Ghost that changed the body, soul, spirit, and mind, changed the mind, will, and emotion, body, soul, and spirit, changed everything about this triune being, influencing the, 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 the body, the soul to do certain things, to follow the spirit, and how we have that on the inside and still and still do things that are so contrary to the word of God. It was absolutely positively amazing. We got to, we got to, we got to pull on this spirit that we have on the inside, this power, this power that Jesus was going to send in a few days was going to be a whole lot more power, powerful than the baptism of John. But I want y'all, I want y'all to wait on it now. And don't go back down to Galilee until you get there. He told him in verse six. Now look at verse six. So, 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 so when they when they would come together, after all this strong teaching, after walking and talking, when they when they came together, look what them guys asked him. So, Lord, I just want to know when you're gonna restore the kingdom of Israel. When 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 you gonna when you gonna restore the when you gonna make us a powerhouse, okay? And get these Romans off of off of us. This thumb off. When you gonna do that? So 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 in order, in any other situation, this question would have been laughable. This would have been a laughable, like a joke. I can't believe y'all boys just asked me this question right here. Okay, it would have been so 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 here here you got Jesus. Didn't have a whole lot of more time down here on this place called the earth to spend with these disciples. And, and rather than asking him a kingdom, a, a educational, spiritual question, Lord, when you gonna, when you gonna, when you gonna put us back up there at the top of the mountain? When you gonna make us the most, you see, he don't spend three and a half years walking with them, talking with them, teaching them, see, with, with, with the teacher, the master teacher, spend all this time teaching them and they still misunderstood, still didn't understand his mission, his vision, why he was here. You see, class, sometimes you can want what you want so bad that, you, that what you got, you can miss it. You know, you see that sometimes with, with men that have a good wife, don't realize the water till you're well grown, gone dry. Sometimes women have a good husband, don't realize you're well till you're Water, your water to your well run dry. And they they told me, said, you look here, said you 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 think, well, don't let don't let don't let me use that example. Okay, don't don't don't. So after three and a half years of all this teaching, they misunderstood what his mission was. His mission was to to free them from the the, the stronghold of sin. Well, they're they, they looking for the freedom from Roman rule. We'll, hey, look here. You give us the freedom from Roman rule, we'll settle for that. That's how, I mean, I'm not saying that's what he, he said, but the question, you're going to restore the kingdom. No, I'm, I'm going to get this sin off. I'm going to get this sin control from, from, from telling y'all to do things you know you shouldn't do, making men do things that are not convenient, making women do things that are not convenient, things that are against nature. Make, making you tell lies like you're telling the truth, making you steal and cheat and do all the things that are contrary to just human nature, not to mention the kingdom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you with that. See, it's, it's a big deal. And we see in verse seven that, you know, look, look what Jesus said. He said, look, first of all, to this question, it ain't for y'all, y'all, it ain't for y'all to know that, the times and the seasons. Ain't, no, ain't but one person know this, that's the Father, that's in his power. So rather than answer the question about the kingdom of Israel, Jesus replied by letting them know about the times and the seasons. That What, what, what you talking about, Jesus? We're talking about the future return. The future return in glory 
and the future return, the future return in judgment. I want you to read Luke chapter 17, verse 20 through 37. So Jesus revealed then that the timing and the day of judgment, don't nobody knew it. It's in the hand and power of God the Father alone. And Jesus made it, made it clear to him, said, look, I don't know this myself. I, ain't gonna, I can't give y'all the exact timing when he gonna come back again. This is, in the, this is in his, my father's hand. And you know what's so amazing? Him and his father was one. He's the, he's the, he's the father in creation, the son in redemption, redemption, redeem, and the Holy Ghost in the church today. So it's amazing then how we see how some folks trying to predict when he's coming back. The Lord done showed me in a dream that he's going to come back in 10 years from now, uh, about 1201. Hey, look, you don't know, so quit and trying to embarrass yourself. Only the Father know, knows this power when he's going to come back again. And uh, in verse number eight, here's what he told him. Here, here come that promise. But I'm going to tell you all this, boys. You're going to get some power after the Holy Ghost come, come upon you, and y'all going to be witnesses. You, you're going you're gonna to start it out down there in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, and not only that, to the utmost parts of the earth. Now, that's going to come when you get the Holy Ghost and have the ability to get these things done. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost brought them a kind of grace. The Holy Ghost brought them a boldness and determination. And all they had to do is receive it. Ain't that something? Boy, ain't that something? Receive it, a free gift. So the Holy Ghost then gave the disciples the divine gift. The divine gift that was necessary for the mission. Necessary for the job. Necessary for sharing the gospel. To evangelize the uttermost parts of the earth means that's going ain't nobody going to be left out. Ain't nobody going to have no excuse. They was going to hear the gospel. And these words of Jesus is an outline for the rest of the book of Acts. Now, 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 the public witness of the apostles began in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And so you read about this in Acts chapter 2. So then Luke speaks of the church growth. How are we going to do it? How, what's going to happen, Luke? Hey, look, all Judea, and not only that, Galilee and Samaria. Now, 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 let me read Acts chapter 9 and verse number 31. I'm going to read this in the Amplified Version. So the church throughout Ju Judah, Judea, and Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed peace without persecution, being built up in wisdom, virtue, and faith, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort and encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it continues to grow in numbers. So the reason why the church grows is the Lord brings the growth. You don't bring the growth. I don't bring the growth. The Lord brings all the growth. That's how the church grows, uh, every, everyone. And we can't forget about that. And I think sometimes we think that the church grows uh, because of something that we did. No, no, wrong again. The church grows because the Lord brings the growth. And it's important that we lean and depend on him, not because of your theological astute you are, not because of your, your, your doctors of divinity, not because of your ability to articulate and you're a great orator or a great singer, organizer, protector, projector, partner, business, or no. It's the Holy Ghost. It's, the, it's the, the spirit that makes all the difference. The purpose of the Holy Ghost was to empower the spread of the message and to give eyewitness testimony about Jesus. About, uh, uh, and, uh, and especially these, these guys had saw him that got up from the dead. And I want y'all to hear about it. I want y'all to know why he did it, why he died, why he rose again. Because if he rose again, you can get up. If you got up, you can get up. Boy, that's a big deal right there. So, so, so this is a testimony then of the book of Acts. And if we don't, if we don't, if we don't pass along this testimony as the, uh, about the objective fact that Jesus the Christ is risen from the dead, we're going to leave out a most a very important part. And I, I, I'm sorry to say, and you all, we all can be a witness, 
But you don't hear a whole lot now about Jesus rose from the dead in a lot of, lot of churches. You hear a whole lot about self-help, personal development, which is important as well. Personal development is important. Self-help is important. But the death, burial, and resurrection is the most important. And, and listen at this, church. We can't leave that part right there. And I ain't got time to read all this, okay? But I want y'all to read Luke chapter 1 and 2, 1 and verse 2, chapter, chapter 24 and verse 26, or 24 verse 46 through 48, and 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. And in and, and, and verse 9, when, he had, when Jesus had spoken all these things, look what happened. He was taken up in a cloud. And them guys just completely out of their sight. Now, this wasn't no limousine cloud service with a cloud parked over here in the corner. No, I wonder, this was this was the power and, and, the, and, and the supernatural preparation that Jesus put out there. And clouds, you can read in the word of God, can also represent the presence of God. And, and clouds also represents a supernatural transport. You read about this in Luke chapter 9, verse 34 through 35. Luke chapter 21, verse 27, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. And Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, and Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. Boy, I'm telling you, I ain't got time to read. You, you know what? I'm going to have to read some of this, y'all. I, I, I just want to read just a little bit of it. Don't, we ain't going to go too long with it. All right, so let me make this a little bit larger so I can uh, break it down here. So Luke 9, 34 and 35. While he doth, while he doth spoke, spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Chapter 21 of Luke and verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great joy. Boy, look at this transport system here. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they, all, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Revelation 11, 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they are sending up to heaven in a cloud. And the enemies beheld them. Hey, class, I don't know how you feel about it, but he's coming back again. We don't know when he comes, he, but we, we know one thing. His word said he's going to come back again. And I got to bring this lesson to a close now. But in verse 10 and 11, while they stand around there looking on, looking up, going on, looking up in heaven, going on, two men stood by in white apparel. And look, what y'all standing here? The same Jesus. That y'all see, y'all stand here glazing, that y'all see go up into heaven, he gonna return back again in just in like manner. Now, now these two men, this white apparel, apparel is apparently angels. And, and, and these boys, these disciples were so busy, just looking all up and glazing and going on, they didn't recognize these two guys. But when them guys spoke, it, it, them guys got their attention. Well, y'all, look, what it is what it is. Jesus going on up to heaven now. He done left y'all something. Going to give y'all something called in about 10 days. Y'all go down there and wait in Jerusalem. In about 10 days, y'all boys going to get something y'all don't know nothing about. It's, it's the, the Holy Ghost is going to come. Jesus done went up. So what I'm saying, y'all, hey, look, quit sitting around. Get busy. We sit back home. It's time to go to whack. That's that's local book. That's country boy talk. It's time to go to whack to go get it done and tell somebody about Jesus and tell them that he he died and he rose again. Yeah, he was crucified and he was buried and three days and he rose again. He was put in a barber tomb because he wasn't gonna need it very long. He got up. And all of us know he got up. We saw him. We didn't see him. He told us to walk with us and talk with us. After, but now he's going back to glory now. But he's going to come back again. See? And then, so th them guys had a whole lot to do to get ready over these next 10 days. To get to church, to get, to get all these folks. Y'all come on. Church, y'all get ready now. 
And y'all come on up, on up to Jerusalem. Had to get all that done, get stuff ready. Had to go get another, because Judas, done, you know, he done killed himself. Had to go get another replacement for Judas. They had a lot to get going and to get done. And they didn't have any time to sit around and twiddle their thumbs. They had to get busy witnessing about Jesus and letting the dying world know that there's hope. There's hope, and it's called Jesus, and he done sent the Holy Ghost. Hey, look, we're out of time. Look, y'all have a show sure enough great rest of the, of the week. Thank you for plugging into our Sunday School class today. Look forward to seeing you again next week for our next Sunday School review. Take care.